You are listening to a free version of the Majority Report with Sam Steeter. To support the show and get another 15 minutes of daily program, go to majority.fm, please. The Majority Report with Sam Steeter. It is Monday, April 20th, 2018, 2020. <laughs> My name is Sam Cedar. This is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps and steps and steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. On the program today, Cheryl Laird, assistant professor of government and legal studies at Bowdoin on steadfast dems how social forces shape black political behavior also on the program today congress near another aid deal settling on one dems blowing it meanwhile a small business aid drained shake shack returns 10 million dollars And Ruth Chris runs the grift. Meanwhile, our testing regime, the one for coronavirus, is in disarray. Some may not even work. Meanwhile, the federal government is literally blockading medical equipment from reaching the states. At least before profit can be skimmed off it. AstroTurfed and milit- militia groups lead protests against the stay-at-home orders across the states, many of them just coincidentally swing states. Price of oil plunges, countdown for Trump's bailout. That'll come quick. In Nova Scotia, a shooting kills 16 people. Meanwhile, in Australia, they will force Google and Facebook to pay for their news content. And thousands of socially distanced Israelis protest Netanyahu. Trump's EPA rollbacks will kill the most marginalized in our society. Meanwhile, Trump seeks revenge on the Indian tribes. And lastly... Those donors to Trump's campaign are subsidizing his kids' girlfriends and wives. All this and more on today's program. Ladies and gentlemen, a welcome. It is a pleasure to have you. I am incapable, I guess, at this moment of assessing what year it is. Um... I don't know about you, but uh, I am exhausted. It is, um, this is a, a little bit tiring. There's such a weird divergence of the way that people are spending uh, their, or experiencing the stay at home order. We, I've gotten many, many emails from listeners and members of the program who are having a tremendous amount of anxiety because they have lost their jobs. The unemployment um, procedure in their state is a disaster. And, um, or they, they haven't been able to get uh, the, they applied on day one for the Paycheck Protection Act loan has not come through. Uh, others, uh, people are, you know, it's like a yoga retreat. And, um, I feel like I'm somewhere in between, not so much yoga, uh, but obviously I'm here. Uh, this is my job. And so, uh, very fortunate for that. Uh, my kids are uh, a nightmare. Uh, hopefully they're not listening. Now a mile is not a nightmare and neither is Saul, but my other I have another family. They're starting to listen now uh, to the show occasionally. So I just want to make that clear. And I've been a bit of a nightmare too, to be fair to the kids. 
So um, it's uh, it's been a little bit difficult. Um, schooling at home is difficult. Not seeing your friends, difficult. Um, and everybody's adjusting to the new normal. And um, one of the ways that we're doing it here is by having absolutely no sleep. So, uh, so thus, I open up the show by thinking it was 2018. So, apologies for that. The 420 celebrants in the crowd uh, appreciated that slip up. So, oh, oh, yeah, geez, I didn't even realize. Uh, so, Matt, are you going to be okay today? Or, oh, yeah, I'll be fine. All right. <laughs> Why is this day different from all other days? Is what Matt is saying. Um, uh, let's jump right in on this. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, this is a, a, a slight moment. Of, you know, I, I, one of the things that I have been uh, thinking about is there's been a lot of calls for media outlets to not cover Donald Trump's briefings. And, um, and particularly, you know, TV ones, so that it can't be a TV show so they can't have the opportunity of having this sort of like free rally every day because it's not as if the information he's giving has any value. It does not appear to be. And um, I'm still not 100% sure of where I sit on that question. I, I, I think obviously the newspapers uh, should be covering it, but I, I, I am inclined to believe that maybe there shouldn't be live coverage by news organizations that have any, you know, sense of integrity. Uh, they can break in and do, in my mind, like what we do, which is show the highlights. If there was any genuine information that came through in these instances, we would present it to you. But he's just, he just lies. He does, I mean, he doesn't, it's just a series of lies and then ramblings. And then I think it's also of value to the American p public to know that this lunatic is just ranting and raving uh, when he's up there. And then there's all sorts of really horrible things that are happening. You know, we sort of like starting to piece together the story of, and we were talking about it quite a bit a week or two ago when it was clear that what the U.S. government was doing was sourcing stuff overseas flying it into the, the country and then giving it to just private distributors, not to distribute it because they have the resources in which to reach and the supply lines already existing, but basically to say like, you can auction this stuff off because if it was exclusively for their ability to get these medical products to the places that need them in the country, then the U S government would say, here's the equipment that we have sec secured for you. You can you you put this out there because you have the supply lines. You can make a, I don't know a four percent profit on it, a five percent profit on it, or you know show us what your normal profit is, and we'll give you three quarters of that. But instead, what they did is like here's the stuff, have at it, and they basically started an auction site, and some of it was sold overseas into other places, and in extraordinary markups. And so what states started to do was they started to secure their own stuff and having to secure their own stuff. And there's a story in the New England Medical Journal that outlines what officials in Massachusetts did to try and secure personal protection equipment. They literally had to drive in the middle of the night, like seven states away, to get 18 wheelers that were labeled the 18 wheelers were trucks that had signs on the side that said it was like produce. And as they were picking this stuff up, agents from the FBI came to intercept the delivery of these personal protection equipment. And they apparently let it go through after they were like, you know, jostling with the people. Department of Homeland Security stood it, sent um, people down there to stop it. They ended up, get, ended up getting part of it back to Massachusetts. But the other part is given to a private entity to then make more profit on it. This is insanity. This is 
I mean, it's, uh, it, it, it's, I imagine there are a lot of countries in the world where this goes on that have gone on in the past, Latin America and Eastern Europe. There's uh, been a lot of, uh, you know, this type of, of just rampant corruption. Uh, I imagine this type of stuff went on in our invasion and occupation of Iraq. It is just sort of stunning that it is uh, happening here in this country. Um, I mean, we've always had some measure of corruption, of course. But this is um, this is another level, I think, um, in terms of the stakes that are involved here, and in terms of we're talking about medical equipment. It's pretty amazing. But that was a uh, a brief tour, detour into saying that uh, there are moments that we're going to continue to play from the presidential briefings because um, one, sometimes they're amusing; other times, they cut to the quick as to what's going on. Uh, this one is amusing. One hopes. There's Donald Trump. He's very, very mad at Maggie Haberman, who I think largely has been a um, an access journalist from the New York Times in many respects. I don't know. Did she write her book already? I think she did. Um, and so maybe in... <laughs> And who knows, maybe this is an indication of who one of her sources is. And now she's, you know, this is how she's sort of like maintaining some of her access now uh, by reporting that Mark Meadows apparently has been having breakdowns, which I can understand. But um, I enjoy it because of him. Here is uh, Donald Trump being asked that question about Mark Meadows. Real information and responsible and thoughtful dialogue from their elected leaders and from the media. Uh, the media has been some very honest, but some very dishonest. You know that. You know that. I mean, I even read a story where Mark Meadows, this tough guy, he was crying. He was crying. This was a Maggie Haberman. You know, she won a Pulitzer Prize for her coverage of Russia, but she was wrong in Russia. So was everyone else. They should all give back their Pulitzer Prizes. In fact, it turned out that the crime was committed by the other side. The crime was not committed by this side. It was committed by the other side, a bunch of bad people. You saw the reports coming out over the last two weeks. They got caught. So Maggie Haberman gets a Pulitzer Prize. She's a third-rate reporter. New York Times. And we put her name up here last week. You saw that. People thought it was a commercial. It wasn't a commercial. It's like a commercial, but it wasn't a commercial. It was just clips. And because we exposed her as being a bad reporter, what happened is she came out and said, Mark Meadows was crying, and they made it sound. I said, Mark, and it's okay if he did. I wouldn't, you know, look. But I think he was crying probably uh, really for the wrong reason they had it down. But he's not a crier. And if he was, I'd no cries. I could tell you people that you know that are very famous, they cry. And that's okay, too. But it was a nasty story in so many ways. It was fake news. And she only did it because we exposed her for being a terrible, dishonest reporter. She is. I've known her for a long while. I haven't spoken to her in a long time. I made the mistake. I take a picture with her at the desk a long time ago. Every time she does the story, if I say, I haven't spoken to her in long, many, many, many months, maybe years. I don't speak to her. She's fake. A lot of people are fake. A lot of people. We get a lot of fake people. But what happens is she writes this story as retribution, puts it in the New York Times, and the New York Times is a very dishonest newspaper. Okay, uh, I have a lot of thoughts about this, but um, uh, one of which is, this is why it's not really a briefing about coronavirus. Because he's spending his whole time um, trying to attack a reporter for reporting, and I can't tell if he... Uh, if he like took this opportunity because he really wanted to knock Mark Meadows, you know, it'd be like the equivalent of like, I know there's a lot of stories out there about, you know, Matt huffing glue and it's okay, but it's not true. Matt huffing glue. They say, they say Mark Meadows wears the diaper too, but you know, I haven't seen it. And even if he did, people wear diapers, adults wear diapers. It's true. It's true. I see bulkiness. 